And welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press. We go through the major stories making the headlines across the country this morning. And we would like to say good morning to Mr. Ezekiel Nyayetok, who's going to be our analyst for today. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Thanks for joining good us. Good morning. It's such a pleasure to be with you, always. It's great yeah. to have you here. All right, we kick off with the Punch newspapers this morning and see what we can find. Uh, it starts with a big story from uh, Benue State. It says, oh, Tom uh, petitions IG over assassination attempt. Adamu assigns probe. Benue governor presents a petition to police chief in Abuja after Villa visit. Adamu assigns investigations to force intelligence DIG, Tijani Baba. And also headers uh, took up arms because nobody listened to their uh, grievances. And that's from Sheikh Gumi once again. Also on the punch, Buhari Tinubu reported rift handwork of mischief makers, says the presidency. And uh, petrol imports gulped 2.11 trillion naira in 2020, says NBS. Uh, we can also find here refineries, reps probe uh, $1.5 billion planned rehabilitation and past repairs. Uh, we also can see on the punch this morning, JAMB plans June 5 exams, begins registration, makes NIN mandatory. And police comb Quara Forest for ab uh, three abducted farm managers. Tell your kinsmen to stop mindless killings, PFN tells President Buhari. And also, Matawale pleads with federal government to hold talks with bandits. Uh, we can also just squeeze one in here. Magistrate bows to pressure, freeze lawyer jailed for contempt of court. Thank God, wouldn't well, you say? Well, best of luck to both of them. <laughs> Nigerian Tribune now, Northern Elders Forum to Buhari, Nigeria falling apart under your watch. Above the fold, governors unhappy over 157,000 tuberculous deaths yearly. Gunmen kidnap FCTA staff. Three others in Abuja demand 50 million naira ransom. Sonwolu commissions 360 units of flats in Ikorodu, gifts teachers Iyawaru apartments each. APC others condemn Obasaki's demolition of opposition members' properties. NULG kicks against Beal to establish or to abolish LG as third tier of government. Varsity students commit suicide over academic failure in Bayelsa. Reps to audit $25 billion allegedly spent on refineries maintenance. 11 feared killed as soldiers battle gunmen in Abia. Gumi here saying bandits won't surrender if they don't feel safe. The question is, do we? Nin compulsory for 2021 UTME registration. And the presidency here is explaining why Tunubu is not frequent in Asuvilla. And here, kidnapping and closure of schools, surest bomb for the destruction of Nigeria. Stories here on the Nigerian Tribune. All right, let's move now to the nation newspapers. No rift between Buhari, Tunubu says presidency. Also, disastrous flooding likely across states, agency warns. Uh, court uh, nullifies SEC sanctions on Oando. Um, all right, and of course, the Delta State rights Buhari to demand Ibori linked loot. We could also find on the nation this morning from uh, Cross River State, Ayade says Cross River's special grass will end farmer headers conflicts. I have to take a pause there to be sure I was reading. I'm sure what I was reading. Also, federal government, Lagos on collision cause over vaccination. We can also find here that the agency threatens to stop vaccine supply and that we are working to resolve all issues. Um, also on the nation, JAM makes NIN mandatory for UTME 2021. And uh, we can see here also arrested 80-year-old uh, header who grazes between Kogi and Oshun released in Ondo State, says he has paid compensation. Those are the big ones on the nation newspapers this morning. Let's turn now to the Daily Independence. We're seeing similar stories here. Northern Elders telling President Muhammadu Buhari that the country is falling apart under his watch. 
Why bandits won't drop their weapons, Kumi? Let's uh, go to stories we haven't seen on the other papers yet. Court declares SEC sanctions against Oando management null and void. Senate exposes payment of 600 or 66 million naira as rent for building not occupied. Senate pushes to end passport racketeering abroad. 2023, Buhari's exit won't affect APC chances of victory. We'll realize why TI usually rates Nigeria poorly. That's federal government saying, seen why Transparency International ranks Nigeria poorly on the corruption index. Nigerian cities risk missing UN 2030 resilient city target. Soldiers kill 11 gunmen in Aba. All right, um, I think we'll take a pause there and get uh, into it. As the I talk, it's uh, uh, your go now. There's a lot of big ones. Uh, one of them that made the headlines across you know, most of the papers is the rift between the president and Bola Metinubu. And we spoke about this earlier, you know, how relevant this is, you know, to make national headlines. Uh, but let's have your take on any of these stories uh, this morning. Okay. Um, several, several, several um, discussions and um, issues to tackle. Even to look at um, the punch that you started, and um, there are several ish, um, stories that I, I, I found um, instructive. Um, Tom and the petition to the federal government is uh, one of them. And um, it bothers Nigerians a lot to what extent when we'll be able to draw a line between governance and politics, because if the issue of security is one issue anywhere in the world, even in America, when the Democrats and the Republicans are quarreling and they're crying. But when it comes to the issue of security, everybody like um, they close ranks and they face it because that's one of the key issues that um, governance is expected to address. Then we talk about um, the issue of um, uh, the rift between Ahmed Bola Tinubu uh, and um, Mr. President. I think that that's a distraction. Nigerians are dying, we become the poverty capital of the world. And I think the media also, I know they need to stay alive. I know that um, some news are like um, wildfire, but the time has come when the media also has to be the, the, the fourth estate of the realm. Yesterday, I had a very, very robust uh, media engagement. And um, I, I, I talked to the media from, from, I have a lot of my media friends, so much of them, and the place was packed full. And we had a heart-to-heart -heart discussion. And I told them, while you want to do the conventional things, the normal things, but know that you have a constitutional role that is extremely important. After uh, you are one of those mentioned in the constitution as the fourth estate of the realm, which means the fourth arm of what we may call government. That's how important the media is. So while you do all these sensational stories, please try to keep us from being distracted by people who have nothing to do. So they go into all these frivolous talks and everything. We have other things like the planned rehabilitation of the refineries and then the rep or the assembly wanting to look into it. The issue just remains very, very simple. When will we have certain level of transparency, accountability, and probity, when will we know that we are the owners of this enterprise called Nigeria and that we, you owe us a duty to make explanations to us at all times? You know, very interesting. Somebody said some. I also run a weekly radio program, Enlightenment on Good Governance and Everything. And one of the things that a young caller said was, you see, people come to us and say, we'll give you gold, we'll give you light, we'll go. When will they come to us and say, what do you want? I found that very instructive. You know, we need to know that government is to serve the people. So if you are giving something to the people, you, you owe it to the people to say, this is what I want to do for such fundamental things. What do you think? Where should we go? Modular refinery? There should be a robust discussion. Should we go on the issue of modular refinery? Should we go on revamping the ailing uh, refineries? Should we go on, you know, the taking it on and going for the new refinery? If we are to let go the old refinery, what should we, what, or if we are to stick to the old refinery, what should be the uh, method we should take? 
should we adopt the method of one getting somebody a core investor to take it up as is even for one dollar one naira you know and build it up i read something that just blew my mind that these four refineries or three of them that are not doing anything that they got about 10 billion monthly as overheads and salaries and things like that and it just blows my mind isn't it better like the americans would say to cut our losses and if we are to, you know, uh, continue with it, should we give it out to somebody? If we are to refurbish and sell, let's have that robust discussion because a billion, $1.5 billion is no chicken change. So I think that our governance style has to necessarily change. We oh. are, are, are adopting this enterprise, uh, or a, a, you know, a political system where it's about entrepreneurs coming in to have returns on the investment and not people who are coming to give us good governance. Okay. And there's also something on the point. Those are some of the issues that are picked from the point. Yeah, there's also something um, on the bottom of the screen there saying, uh, tell your kinsmen to stop mindless killings. And that's from the uh, PFN to the president. Does it work like that? It, it doesn't work like that, but it also does work like that. You know, the reason is that when you are a president and they say, tell your kinsmen, they are indirectly passing a very strong message to you that you have been clannish. And in all, with all due respect, I think, Mr. President, the time has come when the people around him have to tell him how Nigerians really feel. I, I wish that Mr. President would, with the resources available to him, just commission uh, an, an unknown Body, a body who does not know is involved, to just do a, a strategic study of what Nigerians think of him and, and, and give him that report without them knowing that it is from him. So it's an unbiased report. I think the president would be shocked. Something happened, and I want to bring this up as quickly as possible. A friend of mine said he had you know, a discussion with late Joe Wires, and um, the man said he was in the U.S. when he was overthrown, uh, in the military coup, he was then the Senate president, and that he was such a sad man. He wasn't sad that he was removed from office. He was so sad that people actually jumped into the street and they were jubilating. And he told himself, what's going on here? I thought we were told that we were doing so well and everything was so fine. How is it that people are jubilating and not jumping into the street and saying, no, it cannot happen? Our leaders are being lied to all the time. So this man was so, so shocked, so disappointed, so unhappy because he thought he was a very popular person and his government, he didn't know that people will actually jubilate that the military has removed them from the office. If today, you know, it's not the military coup. If today, for instance, Mr. President said, uh, fellow Nigerians, on account of health or this or that, I would like to step aside, you know, even as a joke, as a prayer fool, and then hear the comments. Whether people say, thank God, or people say, no way, it can't happen. No way, no, 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 no. Let him just, let him just put that, that out. So bottom line, I think that what Khan is doing is just throwing something in and say, Mr. President, since you have said that these are your people and we are not your people, please call them to order so that Nigeria can survive. Okay. Mr. Yechuk, let's turn to the nation newspaper. The headline here says, Federal Government, Lagos, on collision costs over vaccination. So this story really, you know, the federal government had created a portal for all Nigerians to register to receive the COVID-19 vaccination. And they discovered that Lagos State had their own, you know, portal where they encouraged people to register to be vaccinated. They asked the Lagos State government about this, Lagos State Minister for Health or Commissioner for Health, and he mentioned that there's been problems with the website, you know, the portal created by the federal government. And just to, you know, address that, they created their own portal. And now the federal government is saying they, they're breaking the rules and they risk not getting vaccines for the next batch. We, and we know how serious this is because Lagos State 
has been the epicenter of the, of the coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria for a long time. And when you look at the statistics of the vaccination, Lagos Ogo are topping the charts, registering or vaccinating one of the, one of the highest percentage of people in Nigeria. So I, I want to get your reaction to <clears throat> this, you know, Lagos portal, you know, saying that there's been network issues with the federal government portal and the threats to cut off vaccine supply for the next batch. Any, any state governor that depends on the portal of the federal government is either, either uh, I don't know the word to use, um, but let me go on the other side and say I want to hail the decision of Lagos state government to do what they have done. What business has the federal government, you know, um, setting up a portal uh, for registration for the different states? It's all these things of, you know, wanting to run government from the center doesn't make sense. What they should do is to set up a portal that collects the portals of the states. Mm. That's when they will be able to know the seriousness of each state. They, that's how they will be able to see the creativity of each state. Because if I'm the governor of a quiet bomb state, for instance, I will understand the peculiarity of our people. I will know how to get about setting up the portal. I'll know how to create the portal to reflect whether I want to have some, some um, language you know, uh, added to it, depending on my understanding of the mentality and the operations of my people, because I want to succeed. They may be saying things, they may be saying languages, certain lingos I may have to apply on my portal because people can relate to it. For instance, if COVID-19 in Akwaibom is re re referred to as Mpami, do you understand me? Mm -hmm. When you say, uh, my people, Mpami, kewi yaki abantum, they can relate to it immediately. But the house man will say, what's that? The Yoruba man will say, excuse me, do you get the point? Yes. So why do we always want everything to be centralized? Mr. Sowo Olu wants to get results. So, and he can tweak it easily. He is getting a feedback from the back end of the portal and is being able to say, look, go to and do, uh, from what I've seen, the Kodu people are not uh, coming in as much as FP people. Can you go there and do some enlightenment? He has a back end that he can see and he can relate to and can re react to in short time. Mr. That is why the police Mr. must be, if, to... if a, a, a DPO in, in, in Nicole Pene wants to take a decision, he goes to commissioner of police that must go to IG, that must go to this. And by the time he comes back, everything is gone. You can't react in, 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 in real time okay. to situations because of the hierarchy. For so I but agree I with the to... governor. I wanted yes. to ask you um, two, two different you know, opinions from the Lagos State Government and from the federal government. You know, the federal government might say that they had initially asked all states to send them, to send the federal government a list, you know, of just the case they have, people who have registered interest, you know, so they have all of that. Because remember, this was one of the things that delayed, you know, the vaccination because the government said, or the federal government had said state governments were yet to send them that list. That's the first one. So they could argue that. On the part of the, uh, you know, from what you're saying, would you say it's better if each state has their own COVID-19 registration portal so they can effectively, you know, ensure vaccination and like you mentioned, translate this to local languages. Exactly. Exactly. You see, there is the politics of COVID-19. Okay? And unfortunately, it's so real. For instance, when you report so many cases, you present your state as being unsafe as a result, you underreport. Because you have underreported and the vaccines have come, they should give you relative to the number you have reported. Now that will make in the next batch for people to be more honest with the report. You see, Nigerians have to come to a point of two can play. If you want to be dishonest, you face the inevitable concomitants or the consequence. Okay, I always talk about the three C's, the chances you take that come your way, the choices you make, and the consequences of your choices. 
it's, it's, it's a statute of general application. It's a global template. So let NCDC tell the governors to can play. What that means is that if they underreport, they pay the price. If they report properly, okay. give right. the doses according to the need cases that have been reported. Okay, let's uh, go to the Tribune this morning. Uh, one of the stories that is uh, coming from Sheikh Gumi once again saying that bandits won't surrender if they don't feel safe. Yeah, I want us to quickly speak on that before we wrap up this morning. Uh, the bottom of the Tribune, it says... Uh, um, before then, just a second, I would, there's another story that I love. That's 350 houses for teachers, uh, Songolo again. I really didn't, um, I was one of those because, I mean, for, for personal reasons, I, I'd come to know Ambode so much, and then um, when someone who was coming, I was very, very, um, I had my reservations, you know. But I think that that young man, um, Lagos State, should give him a chance and open up and really know that that man is making really hard, good decisions. Building houses for teachers is something that every state government should do to encourage teachers as a reward process. So for me, that's a, an A plus. Then um, for um, Gumi, I once referred to him as a respected cleric. But right now, I don't know if he's a nationalist. His approach to all these um, insurgencies and uh, these killers, you know, is making me to have a rethink of, of who he really is and what he really wants. This hard bad game, you are not listening to them, you are not taking care of them, you are not. These are criminals who are raping and naming Nigerians, who are ripping Nigerians dry. And these are people that ought to be jailed, that ought to be killed, that ought to be dealt with according to the law. And they're telling me all these things. For goodness sake, everybody has grievances. In the Niger Delta, what do you say to the youth whose waters have been so polluted they cannot have means of livelihood and everything? I'm not going to tell them to take up arms and start to destroy people, start to maim, start to rape so that they can be heard. I, I won't tell them that. I know they have a good cause. It makes sense. But I'm going to tell them how to get about it. Tell these people that you sh they should channel their, 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 their grievances in a way that makes sense. Every Nigerian, every Nigerian, I am for the Fulanese. Some of my best friends are Fulanese. I, and my heart goes out to all the Amadjuri children. And I, I say that the federal government is being unfair to them. I will be one of those who say, Niger Delta, please, can you contribute some money to our brothers Amadjuris, for them to be helped? These are our brothers, OK? But for you to tell me that there's a justification for you to maim, to rape, to, to extort, to create so much insecurity, we are going to have food farming because farmers cannot go to market. Children are no longer going to school. Do you know what that means? Do you know what this prognosticates for this country in the next five, ten years? And you are talking to me about such people? I think I withdraw that my statement I made earlier, referring to him as a respected cleric. I'll just keep him at the normal level because I honestly don't know what his game plan is. I don't know where he's coming from. All right. Thank you very much. As a Kelly, I talk. Uh, very interesting hearing your views on these uh, stories. And, of course, looking forward to another conversation with you. Good morning once again. Yes, have a great day. Thank you. All right. Uh, Thank you. We are still here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're going on a short break, and uh, we have a little bit more to share with you. Yes, today in history.